Now you might look at this being posted on April 1st and go, funny joke making fun of the 40Ks. I assure you, nothing being said here is a joke. I may have marketed this as the April 1st video, but that is vastly different to an April Fool's video. Those are two entirely different five letter words beginning with F. This is my entirely honest, legitimate, and well thought out video about which emperors from across time and space could beat the emperor of mankind in a stand up fight. Or maybe I'm full of hot air and I'm making this video because the only other option that came up to mind was a 30 second video where I pretend to quit YouTube because maybe that'll come back around to being funny one day. Now I might be cheating a bit because some of these people are technically kings, not emperors. And to that I say, I simply don't care. You cannot stop me, it is my list, and I wish all people pointing it out in the comments a very trench foot. Anyways, on with this highly informative and correctively object list. Number 10, Palpatine. Now I admit that Palpatine wouldn't win every time, he's certainly weaker than the Emperor of Mankind. But consider that Palpatine has one advantage that the Emperor can never hope to replicate or match. That bit where he spins and goes, Aah! you know the bit, I know the bit, I just won't be showing you the bit. Because if I do, a Disney executive will come to my house and have my family shot in front of me before making me dig their graves. That's also why there's no Star Wars music for the Star Wars character. Number 9, The God Emperor of Mankind. Now this might seem weird, how can he beat himself? Well consider that there are two versions of the Emperor. The version where he is alive and doing things that don't involve being a nugget powered by tortured wizard souls, and the version where he's a god but can't really do much directly without possessing someone on account of being a magic vegetable. Now the god version could probably pull off some psychic power mumbo jumbo to destroy the living version, but the living version has the advantage of being able to walk, talk, and scratch his ass when it gets itchy. So I'm putting it up to a 50-50 chance on who be too. Number 8, the Sith Emperor from Star Wars The Old Republic, Vitiate, or whatever of the 50 different names he had at some point. Why, you ask? Well, it isn't any of the feats he displayed in the game, like being able to cheat death, or his incredible power, or the empire he was hiding behind the curtains from everyone despite the fact that it was capable of and indeed poised to wipe out both the Jedi and Sith and their respective factions. In fact, I'm only sort of certain that those events actually occurred. You see, my knowledge of that era of Star Wars extends to the first Knights of the Old Republic game, and the words of my friends who played the MMO so often, I'm pretty sure they could quote every major quest line by memory. And because I know at least one of them is watching this video, I'd just like to say hi. Start buying Warhammer miniatures, bastard. Or at least stop being busy and play a campaign of Total War with me. Yeah, I'm using my platform to shame my friends into hanging out with me. Fucking live with it. Anyways, the real reason I think this guy could beat the Emperor of Mankind is because I played a D&D campaign in that setting and it was goddamn awesome. My Sith Lord character was easily the favorite one I ever made, and the only reason I'm not putting him on this list is because he isn't canon, and more importantly, he never became an Emperor. So the Sith Emperor gets the spot by virtue of being an Emperor existing in the same time period as my original character, Do Not Steal. Number 7, Cyrus the Great. Now this guy wins entirely because that D&D character I was talking about a moment ago was named Cyrus after this guy. Moving on. Number 6, Gwyn the Lord of Cinder. See, technically a king or a lord, but I don't care. How could he beat the Emperor? Well, you see, he comes from a world where magic is just called magic. They don't beat around the bush by calling it psychic powers and having a thousand different weird criteria for how it works and how it doesn't work, but usually it still works anyway when the plot needs it to. Gwyn just throws magic lightning at people, and because it's magic, it beats pretend pseudo-magic. Also, consider this. The Emperor beat the Void Dragon. Gwyn murdered an entire race of dragons into extinction. Using basic genocidal math, we can determine that Gwyn beat more dragons than Olympi and is therefore stronger than him. Also, the Emperor didn't even kill the Void Dragon, he just locked it in a basement so a cargo cult could form around it. Gwyn 86 those motherfuckers. Number 5, King Oscar Sardines. I love sardines, and because of this, King Oscar could beat the Emperor. It's quite simple, really. Number 4, any Stellaris faction leader with the title of Emperor. Bonus points if they're psychic, too. See, Stellaris faction leaders, unlike the Golden Cripple, can actually get things done. And when you add mods that cause Stellaris fleets to make Warhammer spaceships look like paper airplanes by comparison, they can lead empires that could obliterate the Emperor and the entire Imperium with little effort. I understand that the Imperium is an empire of a million worlds, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to crack every single one of those planets like an egg so the Imperium can know true terror before my faction leader sends the Emperor straight to hell in a handbasket with a planet I turned into a gun. Number 3, Sigmar. I couldn't care less about what some lore historian has to say about their respective strength. When I went to the Wikipedia category page, Fictional Emperors and Empresses, Sigmar was there and the God Emperor wasn't. So as far as I'm concerned, anything else anyone says is irrelevant. You can't argue with Wikipedia. Number 2, Frieza. There are many factors here. Frieza could already destroy planets with zero effort, even before Dragon Ball Super screwed the power scaling left, right, and center. Believe it or not, he's also psychic. And combined with the fact he has monstrous physical strength and the willpower only a psychotic tyrant can have, he can surely contest the Emperor's own psychic might. He can turn his entire body gold, which is a step up from the Emperor merely wearing gold armor. And most important of all is this. The Anathema does not have a song written by a Japanese metal band all about him. Frieza does, and that's something the Emperor simply cannot win in the face of. Number one, Emperor Karl Franz. Summon the Elector Counts. I rest my case.
Number zero sans undertale. What the dog do?